upcoming rerun banners of the second phase of patch 3.7 are the best banners that we have seen this year in 2023. However, with only a patch and a half remaining before the release of Fontaine and the inevitable buildup of new set of characters, the big question becomes whether or not pulling for the current banners of El Haytham and Kazuha will be a worthwhile endeavor. You might understand what I mean by this, because at the end of the day, we are talking about Hoyoverse. And over the years, we have come to see how Hoyoverse tends to run extremely strong characters that many players want and or could very much benefit from right before every new region. And when the new region drops, all the new trailers and new character buildup will all come along with it to maximize hype and profit for the company. But before diving into this guide, I want to take a moment to thank you all for helping me reach over 100,000 views and 760 subs in only three weeks which is insane for a brand new channel. Again, thank you all. Thank you. So, my short and concise answer to the questions in the introduction is, yes, pulling on either Kazuha or El Haytham, especially considering the high quality of the four stars that are being reran alongside them, is almost always worth it, due to how powerful both Kazuha and El Haytham are. That being said, and this is very important, so please do keep this in mind, Fontaine is right around the corner which means that if you are a free-to-play player or a low spender, and you're someone who, okay, let's say you really like the concept of Fontaine, you really like French history or uh, French slash Roman slash British Isle designs, or you're someone who's, who's simply interested in Fontaine characters, then you need to understand that if you don't have enough Primo Gems to uh, not only guarantee getting Kazuha or Al Haytham, and you end up uh, spending everything you have right now, there is a high chance that you're not going to be able to get the first phase of the Fontaine characters. So when you are pulling, yes, they are powerful characters. That being said, if you value different things, then you need to take that into consideration before uh, choosing which character to pull for. Okay, so because this is going to be a comprehensive guide, the length of the video is going to be on well, the longer side. And I will be leaving timestamps in the description and chapters across the video. That being said, I highly encourage you to watch uh, either the entirety of the video or the vast majority of the video because I will be including a lot of very valuable information or a lot of information that might be relevant to you uh, across the video and across the different sections. Information such as notes, tips, and disclaimers. So I have to, before we begin with the guide, I have to mention that my El Haytham is not only R1 with his best in slot weapon, but he's also C6. And this is extremely important to mention because the damage that my El Haytham is going to do is not going to be indicative of what a C1 or a C0 El Haytham is going to be doing. That being said, it is important to mention that El Haytham is as well a very, very powerful DPS unit at C0. He is a complete character at C0. He does not need his constellations, even though they do provide him with a very solid amount of stats. Additionally, even though my El Haytham is C6, I have to also mention this, his C4 and his C6, to unlock their full potential, you need to perform certain combos, which I will try my best to actively avoid this video. I might not get it right all the time. That being said, this is not necessarily a damage showcase. This is more of a guide on what El Haytham should be doing at C0. Uh, but again, because he is C6, he will be doing, in general, uh, significantly more damage than what a C0 El Haytham will be doing. Okay, so what are some things that, well, some people might not like about El Haytham? First of all, he is a main DPS. And what does this mean? It means that he requires field time. And this is important because unlike characters like Raiden Shogun or characters like Nahida or characters like uh, Kazuha or characters like Yelan or characters like Bennett, he is a character that has to be played as a main on-field DPS and he will require a considerable amount of time. Now, El Haytham can be used in a quick swap uh, in a quick swap uh, manner. That being said, I will be talking about that in later on in his combos and rotation section. But for the vast majority of situations, he is a character that will demand a reasonable amount of time to play on field. Uh, it is between 8 to 12 seconds. You can extend it up to 16 seconds, and you could go further if your enemy is uh, low enough and he's about to die, which means swapping off of El Haytham is not really worth it. But for the vast, vast majority of time, El Haytham's uh, on-field duration is going to be between 8 to 12 seconds. Uh, furthermore, El Haytham is a mechanically intensive character. What does this mean? It means that... Uh, similar to, I suppose, someone like Hu Tao, he's a character that requires a considerable amount of effort to play. Now, he's 
he's not as difficult as Hu Tao. I would say that playing Hu Tao to an optimal level is much, uh, not much, but I uh, let's say considerably harder than playing Al Haytham to his optimal level. But he is not a brain dead unit to play, which means you will have to be actively participating in the gameplay. Unlike, let's say, someone like uh, Ayato. Ayato is an extremely branded character. He is a powerful character, but he is also extremely easy to play, which means, well, if you're someone who does not really want to think, then Ayato would be a much better character for you than someone like El Haytham or Huta. But, on the contrary, El Haytham is an extremely powerful DPS unit. In terms of damage, there are only two characters in the entire game, two main DPS characters in the entire game that can output as much damage as this character can do, and those two are Hu Tao and Ayaka. And this is consistent across all constellation levels, across all three units. But keep in mind, this is very important. What makes Al Haytham better than Hu Tao and Ayaka is the fact that he is a Dendro unit which is the same thing that makes Nahida better than the vast majority of characters in the game. In addition to all of her supportive utility, she is a Dendro unit. She has consistent Dendro application that is built in into her normal attacks. El Haytham has the exact same thing, and he has an extremely high amount of Dendro application. This is his uh, normal attack Dendro effusion, by the way, because I was not showing it earlier. Uh, it is tied into his mirrors, which we're going to discuss in his abilities. But again, because he's a Dendro character, he's considerably better than uh, the vast majority of main DPS units. In fact, I would say that he is, for most accounts, the best DPS unit in the entire game. He is not quite as good as, like, god tier units. He's not as good as Bennett, Sincho, uh, Yelan, Nahida, and uh, Kazuha. But he is pretty much as good as a DPS can get, or as close as a main DPS can get to those S+, plus or god tier units. Now, let's talk about Al Haytham's core kit mechanic, which is his light mirrors. So, Al Haytham's light mirrors are uh, these things which you can see on his left. And while they are active, not only is Al Haytham's normal attacks infused with Dendro, but he also gains a uh, coordinated attack which he can proc once every 1.6 seconds. Let me show you what uh, the uh, coordinated attacks look like when they are active. So, this is going to be our test dummy because it's just a tanky target that you can hit and does not move so as you can see this is the three mirror again three mirror now this is going to be two mirror i'm going to wait a little bit now this is our one mirror attack so these were the uh, coordinate attacks that el haytham gains from his mirrors and when the mirrors are gone as you can see no uh, no other coordinate attacks are applied so it is important to mention this el haytham's projection attacks they have a strict special icd which means the first and second projection attacks that occur are going to trigger reactions differently. When El Haytham's first three mirror projection attack happens, only the first and third instance of each uh, projection attack are going to trigger a reaction. But on his second three mirror projection attack, only the second instance of light mirror uh, attacks are, is going to be triggering a reaction. Now, this is consistent even with his two mirror and one mirror projection attacks, but keep in mind that with his two mirrors, he only attacks twice, as you can see in the multiplier over here, or the projection attack in, in of itself only hits twice, which means the first one is gonna react on the first projection attack, and the second one is gonna react on the second projection attack, but this does not really matter because it's only happening once either way. And when it comes to his uh, one mirror projection attack, well, it's only one instance of damage, and wherever that one instance of damage happens, it triggers a reaction. Understanding how Al Haytham generates light mirrors is vital to understanding Al Haytham's kit because once you know how his light mirrors work, you essentially understand his kit. Everything else is extremely simple to explain. So, I will break it down to you point by point and make it as simple as possible to understand. Al Haytham can generate light mirrors either through his elemental skill and elaboration on form, fetters of phenomena, which is his elemental burst or for causal correction, which is uh, his first ascension passive over here. So, his first ascension passive allows him to generate one mirror if he has no mirrors active or if he has mirrors active. And this one mirror is generated either through a plunge attack or a charge attack. And both the plunge and the charged attacks, they share the exact same uh, cooldown, which is a 12 second cooldown, and they share it on the same talent, which means you can either proc a mirror through either a charge attack or a plunge attack within one, within 12 seconds, and you cannot do it again through a different charge attack or a plunge attack 
within those 12 seconds. But his elemental skill, if Alhatham has no mirrors, he will generate two mirrors. If he has one mirror or pre-existing mirrors in general, he will generate only one mirror. Alhatham's burst, it generates three mirrors if Alhatham has zero mirrors. It generates two mirrors if Alhatham has one mirror. It generates one mirror if Alhatham has two mirrors. And it generates zero mirrors if his elemental burst consumes three mirrors. Now that you know how uh, Alhatham uh, generates his mirrors and consumes them through his elemental burst, it is important to talk about how his mirrors decay. If Alhatham has three mirrors and then he stands still, does nothing, these three mirrors will decay over a course of 12 seconds, after which Alhatham will have no dendro infusion. And each mirror will proc a uh, projection attack or a coordinated attack every 1.6 seconds. Now, this is very important. A mirror lasts for 4 seconds, and every 1.6 seconds you can proc a projection attack, which means 1.6 plus 1.6, that's 3.2 seconds which means you can proc two projection attacks and still have a 0.8 second interval or a 0.2 second leniency time through which you can generate another mirror. And this is essentially the core mechanic of Alhatham. This is how he functions. You're gonna want to ult on Alhatham while having zero mirrors in order to generate three mirrors right after you trigger the second projection attack, which means 3.2 seconds later, you're going to have a 0.8 second interval through which you can use either your Ascension 1 passive, Charge Attack or Plunge Attack, or your Elemental Skill in order to generate another third mirror to extend the duration through which Alhatham can have three mirrors active on himself. And you can do this twice, either through your Elemental Skill or your first Ascension passive. After using one, you're going to use the other to, to refresh the, uh, the duration again. But keep in mind, you have to do it uh, once every 3.2 seconds. And this means, in total, Alhatham will have an uptime of approximately... 12 seconds of three mirror projection attacks. The final thing that I want to discuss when it comes to Alhatham's talents and abilities is his second ascension passive and his talent scaling. So Alhatham's second ascension passive, Mystery Slave Bear, it will give you 0.1 damage bonus up to 100% damage bonus for both your uh, elemental skill and your ultimate ability. Now, when it comes to elemental skill, this uh, passive, the Mystery Slave Bear, it will not increase the rush damage from his elemental skill impact attack. It will only increase the mirror damage, but that is essentially all what you need. And when it comes to his ultimate, it will increase all of the instances because they scale off of the same multiplier. Now, Mystery Slave Bear will give you 0.1% damage bonus for every one point of elemental mastery that you have on Alhatham. In a lot of situations, you will not reach the 100% damage bonus cap. This essentially incentivizes you to build elemental mastery over attack because as you can see Alhatham's um, elemental skill, his light mirrors, and his ultimate, they all have split scaling between attack and elemental mastery. And while yes, having attack in your kit or having attack in your stats is good, it is fine, it is not the primary stat that you're looking for. The primary stat that you're looking for with Alhatham is, well, number one, it's going to be crit rate and crit damage along with uh, energy recharge, but Number two, after crit, you are looking for Elemental Mastery, and Elemental Mastery is extremely valuable on El Hayta. And the reason that is the case is not only because of his talent scaling and his uh, second ascension passive, but it's also because of spread reaction. El Hayta, between spread, between his uh, second ascension passive and between his light mirrors, he has, essentially, he triple dips into Elemental Mastery scaling, because his uh, talents have base Elemental Mastery scaling built into them alongside attack, his second Ascension passive rewards him for building Elemental Mastery, and the Spread Reaction, because Spread Reaction scales off of whatever your abilities scale off of, or whatever the damage itself scales off of, this means that Spread is going to scale with Alhatham's attack and with Alhatham's Elemental Mastery. That being said, Spread Reaction is going to scale more with Alhatham's Elemental Mastery than it will scale with his attack. Additionally, I should mention this. Because spread scales off of whatever your talent multiplier scales off of, in this case, it's going to be attack and elemental mastery. Spread also as a reaction, it is an additive reaction, and it scales off of crit damage, attack, elemental mastery in this case, in addition to scaling off of the character's level, but 
spread does not scale off of the talent level of the ability that procs the spread reaction. What does this mean? It means the following. If I level up Alhatham's talents, I am not increasing the damage that these talents are going to do when they spread. I am only increasing the base multiplier of the talent. Next up, I'll be showing you Alhatham's combos. Now, do keep in mind that Alhatham has a lot of combos, and the number of combos that Alhatham has access to only goes up the more constellations you unlock. At C6, Alhatham has an enormous amount of combos. That being said, again, as I said earlier in the video, I'll be treating this Alhatham as if he was C0. In fact, in order to avoid killing the test dummy, I will uh, remember to change the weapon right now. The damage that you will see, regardless of what weapon I use, is not indicative of Alhatham's damage. What I'm trying to show you right now is essentially the rotations and combos that Alhatham has access to. Let us start with the first combo, which is the most basic, the most simple combo that every Alhatham needs to know. And it is the following. You're going to start off, assuming that you have Nahida or Yao Yao, with whichever one you're going to use their abilities. You're going to use your fourth character, and then you're going to swap to Alhatham, you're going to ult, and then you're going to swap to Fischl or Raiden, you're going to get to your elemental skill, and then you're going to catch the mirrors. And then after the second mirror hit, I charge attack, refresh the third mirrors, it will hit again. Oh my god, I'm going to kill him. Okay, but you get the point. <laughs> okay, so imagine if I had the main weapon. You want to swap to your main or sorry, your supportive characters. You want to use their abilities. And after doing so, you want to swap into Alhatham. And then you want to ult with Alhatham. And after that, you're going to swap to your Electro character. You're going to press your E. You're going to swap back to Alhatham within two seconds. Catch the mirrors. You're going to attack until you have two mirror hits. And then you're going to either E or charge attack in order to refresh the mirrors you're gonna have two more three mirror hits and then you're gonna use whichever one you haven't used which is your e or your uh uh elemental skill in order to get the final uh, stack of three mirrors and then have two more additional three mirror strikes i might hold my ability for longer because i'll be explaining but whenever i say hold this is the maximum amount of hold duration that i actually mean i do not mean hold it for a prolonged period of time the next combo I'm going to show you is going to be a quick sustained rotation. It's a different variation of the exact same combo I showed you earlier. The only difference is that uh, the first one I showed you was a 16, 15 to 16 second rotation. This one is a quick 12 second rotation, but they follow the exact same rules. So we're going to start with our uh, elemental skill or electro elemental skill this time. We're going to use our uh, supportive abilities, whichever supports they are. And then we're going to use our other supports. After that, we swap to Alhatham, we ult, and after we ult, we instantly eat to get the Denra Infusion. And now we're gonna have the three mirror hits. Again, three mirror hits. We're gonna charge attack, refresh the three mirror hits, and this is the gist of it. The next combo I will be showing you is a quick swap uh, rotation combo. Now, this type of combo is useful in Nilo Bloom teams or in a quick swap team where you will be uh, moving between your characters really quickly. And this combo is also useful if you are playing Alhatham normally but you do not have your ult up. So this is simple, you either tap or hold your E, I will hold my E like this, and then you're gonna plunge, get the three mirror hit, you're gonna attack for as long as you need to. In a Nilo Bloom team, you're, you will leave right after the second one. So this is in a Nilo Bloom team, you'll swap right now, use your Nilo attacks or your other supportive attacks, and then you'll swap back to Alhatham. You're gonna either E again or you're gonna use your elemental burst and repeat the rotation. So the next rotation I'll show you is the longest possible rotation that you can have on Alhatham. It is a flex swap prolonged rotation. And this rotation relies on either using Yai Miko or uh, Fischl. I like to use Fischl in this rotation. That being said, I do have to say running someone like uh, Raiden would work. But again, Yai Miko and Fischl are, uh, while yes, the rotation is much more complex, it is much better to use them because they do provide significantly more damage. So, for the sake of demonstration, I will start with Alhatham. You can start with other supportive abilities, but I will start with Alhatham. We're gonna use Fischl's E, and then we're gonna hold and then plunge with Alhatham, use our mirrors. After the second mirror, we're gonna swap, use our supports, and then I'm gonna use my Baiju just for the sake of just showing you what's gonna happen. And then we're gonna swap back to Alhatham, we're gonna ult, and then we're gonna ult on Fischl, swap to Alhatham, catch the mirrors, and then this is essentially the rotation. So this next rotation that I'll show you is the final basic rotation out of Alhatham's rotations. It is a simple three mirror ult rotation and it is useful in a quick swap team where you might be running Alhatham with someone like Raiden Shogun where you actually want to use Raiden Shogun on field. Uh, now I will say this, 
do not try to use this rotation as a nuking rotation because number one uh, Alhatham's ult at c0 does not do that much damage number two nuking uh, for free to play or for low spender is highly highly not recommended not not only because nuking is unreliable but because sustained damage tends to provide you a mu much more higher damage in the long term so Again, I highly recommend using Raiden in this rotation. This is how it's going to work. You're going to use uh, Nahida or any support that you have. You're going to use your other supports. And then you're going to swap to Elhatham. After swapping to Elhatham, you're going to hold E. You're going to use your mirrors. You're going to ult. Swap to Raiden. And this is it. Now, again, the reason I was able to one-shot this, by the way, just for... Uh, I guess visualizing what happened, this uh, boss has uh, around 500,000 HP at level 90. Uh, and this rotation is good for nuking, but as I said, I do not recommend nuking as a uh, concept for uh, free-to-play players or low spenders. But it could be useful in some situations. It is one of the available basic rotations that any Elhatham can do. Now... I will not be uh, showing you guys in this video any C6 rotations for many reasons, but the primary reason is because C6 rotations for the vast, vast majority of players, it is not useful. Uh, but again, uh, these were all the basic combos that you can run with El Haytab. If you want to see C6 advanced combos, then let me know down in the comments. In terms of artifact sets and artifact stats, it is extremely simple and extremely straightforward. Across every single team, Al Haytham's artifacts and uh, stats are going to remain the same. If Al Haytham is being ran alongside other Dendro support that can use uh, Deep Wood Memories, then Al Haytham himself wants to run 4-piece Gilded Dreams because it gives him all the stats that he wants and needs. Now, in terms of artifact main stats, you want to run Crit Trait or Crit Damage depending on which you need more, and then you want to run Elemental Master Sands. You can run Attack Sands, but again, Elemental Master Sands is significantly better. And then for your cup, you want to run Dendro Damage Bonus the vast, vast majority of the time. There are very, very few situations where Elemental Master Cup is useful, but 99% of the situations it is Dendro Damage Bonus. Now, if Alhatham is being ran as a solo Dendro unit, then you want to run him with Deep Wood Memories, because otherwise the damage from this set is going to fall off. If he has another support that can run Deep Wood Memories, then you want to run him on Gilded Dreams. And you focus on Crit, Dendro Damage, and Elemental Master. Now, I have a weapon ranking list on the screen right now. This list, keep in mind, this is very important, it is ranked based on damage, not based on the weapon I would recommend, because there are other factors to look into when rating weapons other than damage. For example, you might notice that a weapon like, uh, let's say, the Favonius Sword is going to be placed extremely low on the list. But, even though Favonius Sword is a low weapon on the list, I would still recommend Favonius Sword if you are running El Haytham as a solo Dendro uh, driver. Because if El Haytham is a solo Dendro enabler, then Favonius Sword is not only going to provide him with an insane amount of energy recharge, but it also lowers the overall team's energy requirements. Plus, when El Haytham is solo Dendro, you do not care about his personal damage as much as you would care about his enabling capabilities. But Favonius Sword will not provide you that much damage. It is still a decent weapon. Now, something that I should mention about Favonius weapons is that... Favonius weapons become more useless the higher your account's investment is. And here's why that is the case. When you reach an account investment that is as high as, uh, let's say, my account, where you have extremely good artifacts on the vast majority of your characters, your characters are no longer going to need the energy recharge that a Favonius weapon would provide. But there are situations where, let's say you are running a team where you're one-shotting waves super fast, and because you're one-shotting waves extremely quickly, you don't have enough time to actually generate energy in that situation, well, yes, Favonius is going to be useful. But in general, Favonius is recommended if El Haytham is being ran as a solo Dendro enabler. That being said, there are better options, which we'll talk about. So as a baseline, the best 4-star weapon to run El Haytham is going to be Tukabo Shiguri. Now, I know it is ranked lower than Harbinger of the Dawn, and yes, Harbinger of the Dawn is indeed competitive with weapons such as uh, the Primordial Jade Cutter and Horanga Pakufutsu and Mist Splitter. But I would almost always recommend uh, Tukabo Shiguri or Horanga Pakufutsu or even Iron Sting or Zephos Moonlight. I would always recommend them above Harbinger of the Dawn. Because even though Harbinger of the Dawn provides you with the most amount of damage compared to those weapons, 
or it is slightly lower than uh, Haranga Paku Futsu and Miss Splitter, but it still provides you with a lot of damage, competitive amount of damage. It is important to notice that Harbinger of the Dawn does not have a passive if you are below 90% HP. And that is not really a good thing. So in terms of gameplay, I would recommend to Kabu Shiguri or Haranga Paku Futsu or any other weapon on the list. But in terms of damage, yes, Har Harbinger of the Dawn does provide you with a lot of damage, assuming that you can maintain the 90% HP uptime. Finally, I should mention that a weapon such as the uh, Freedom Sworn, while yes, it does not do as much damage as the top weapons such as Haranga Paku Futsu or Primordial Jade Cutter or Light of the Polar Incision, it is still a very good weapon because Al Haytham can benefit from it, both its passive and its effect. Because Al Haytham not only uses the substat of Elemental Mastery very effectively, as we discussed earlier in the video, but the effect not only buffs Al Haytham, but it can also potentially buff his teammates depending on whether they want it or not. That being said, his best in slot weapon is going to be Light of the Foliar Incision. It's 96.2 crit value, plus a decent base attack, plus a very good passive. This weapon, if you have it, it is Al Haytham's best in slot, use it on him. So, when it comes to Al Haytham's constellations, here's my recommendation. Uh, his constellations, 1 through 5, are all super, super mid. So, if you want to pull for Alhatham, my advice, either go for C0 Alhatham, because Alhatham is a perfectly viable character and a perfectly good character at C0, and he is complete. If you are someone who can afford C6, you go for C6, because Alhatham C6 is one of the best C6 constellations in the entire game. It is very, very powerful. But if you cannot go for C6, then you don't even bother with constellations, just go for C0 and you're good enough. Now, why are his constellations super mid? Let's talk about them. His uh, C1, it reduces the cooldown of Alhatham's elemental skill by 1.2 seconds every one second when his uh, light mirrors hit a target. Now, this constellation, most of the time it will be useless for a C0, or, or sorry, a C1 Alhatham on its own, it's going to be useless because in most rotations, this does not reduce your cooldown or does not affect your cooldown enough for it to actually be significant for the rotation itself. This constellation is only useful for a C6 Alhaitha. Now, when it comes to his C2, his C2 is mid for different reasons than his C1. While yes, his C2 is more useful for a C6 Alhaitha, his C2 also as a constellation on its own, it is very slightly above average. It provides Alhaitha with 200 elemental mastery if he generates four mirrors, which means you get three mirrors and you get another fourth mirror, uh, additional mirror in order to max out the four stacks. That's a total of 200 elemental mastery for Alhaitha. It does provide him with a little bit more damage, but Al Nahida's C2 provides Al Alhatham with, with more damage on its own than Alhatham C2 provides himself. So if you're going for a C2, instead of going for Alhatham C2, you go for Nahida C2 for Alhatham. After that, what you want to do is you want to take into consideration his C3 and C5. Remember in the video when I said that Alhatham's spread damage does not scale whatsoever with his talent uh, level? Alhatham's spread damage only scales with his crit, his own level, and his attack and elemental mastery. This means that Alhatham C3 and uh, C5 do not increase his reaction damage, which is a very, very, very significant portion of his damage. But his C3 and C5 increase his uh, talent multipliers, which becomes significant again at C6. So with C6, they are good. Without C6, they are super... Actually, they are not even mid. They are below average. So his C4, again, his C4 is super mid. It's very good with his C6. On its own, it's mid. This is a common trend. You're going to understand why his C6 improves all of his constellations. We're going to get to that. But his C4, what it does is, if Alhatham ults, every mirror that Alhatham consumes when he ults will provide his team with 30 elemental mastery. So if, he, if Alhatham ults at uh, three mirrors, he's going to provide the entire team besides himself with 270 elemental mastery because every single member gets 90 Eon. And if Alhatham generates three mirrors when he ults, he's going to get 30 dendro damage bonus. And if he generates one mirror, two mirrors, he's going to get 10 dendro damage bonus and 20% dendro damage bonus, respectively. Again, this constellation on its own, it's mid, it gets improved significantly with his C6. Now, what does his C6 do? Why is it so crazy? Here's the thing. On its own, his C6 is insane. It's 90 crit value, and it provides him with three light mirrors when he ults, regardless of how many light mirrors Alhatham had or consumed. 
And notice this first passive is much, much better than the second passive. At first sight, at first glance, you might think that 90 CV is so important that it, it is the dominating factor in this constellation. But when you pull this constellation, it's not just the 90 crit value, it's not just the 10 crit rate and 70 crit damage, it's the fact that you always generate light mirrors, which means you unlock new rotations through his C6, which can improve his C1, his C2, and his C4 very, very much. Because now, what happens with Elhatham, when he ults, he can consume his three mirrors, give the entire team to 170 elemental mastery, and then he will get 10 dendro damage bonus, and then when he generates an extra mirror, he will get 150 to 200 elemental mastery, and then on top of that, he gets... 10% uh, crit rate and 70% crit damage, which will increase his own damage, his spread damage, and his C3 and C5 value, because now the crit is also going to factor into the talent level. So, again, if you're pulling for Alhatham, you either go for C0 Alhatham, or you go for C6 if you can afford it. When it comes to Alhatham's team compositions and builds, my best recommendation is to run him in a team composition that takes advantage of his design as a spread carry. Now, because Elhatham is a spread carry, there are several team compositions that directly benefit him, or benefit from him. And those are a Hyper Bloom, a Quick Bloom, or a Quicken slash Spread team composition. Now, for me personally, because my Elhatham is C6 and he is super high investment with his Bust and Slot weapon and super good uh, artifacts, it is not worth it for me to potentially reduce Elhatham's own spread damage through an external Hydro Aura in order to facilitate Hyper Bloom. Because my damage when Elhatham spreads is much, much higher than what the potential Hyper Blooms would be doing. However, in the vast majority of situations, for most players, and even in some situations for me, it is worth it to run Alhatham as a driver for a Quick Bloom and a Hyper Bloom team because of how broken those reactions are at a baseline level. Now, for this Abyss specifically, the team composition that you see on screen is a variation of a team composition that I showed before in an earlier video. If you remember from my top 5 Elhatem team compositions to try, I showed you a virgin team with Elhatem, Yao Yao, Chincho, and uh, Tomo. In this team, I replaced Yao Yao with Bennett because Bennett is extremely good at breaking the Cryo uh, shields for the Abyss Heralds and the Abyss Baptist later on. But this team is also really good because Toma himself is super, super broken this Abyss. Toma is really good this Abyss. And Toma is a good character in general, but this Abyss is even, is even way better. Uh, so this is a virgin team that you can run for Alhatham. It is one of the variations of a virgin team that you can run. That being said, you can also run Alhatham in multiple team compositions, and he has a lot of potential, uh, well, I suppose, partners and slash supports that you can run with him. As for El Haytham's team compositions outside of the ones I just talked about, I want to mention the potential, uh, I suppose, partners that El Haytham can use, uh, support slash partners that El Haytham can use or be ran alongside with. Now, at C6, assuming every single character on the team at C6, El Haytham's absolute best team in the entire game is going to be El Haytham, Yaimiko, Nahida, and uh, Baiju. Again, this is assuming all four characters are at C6. This is his absolute best team composition. But Yai Miko on her own is extremely good with El Haytham, and you can run El Haytham and Yai Miko both at C0, both at C6, it doesn't matter. They are two of the best pairing in the game. Same thing with El Haytham and Nahida. El Haytham and Nahida are very, very good together. Nahida is El Haytham's best support. El Haytham is Nahida's best DPS. That being said, Nahida at C0, when both at, are at C0, Nahida does have access to other teams that either have slightly more damage than El Haytham's teams or, uh, well, equivalent damage output. But remember this, this is very important. When El Haytham is at C6, Nahida's best team becomes an El Haytham spread team due to the, the sheer amount of damage that El Haytham himself is going to be doing. He's going to be doing as much damage as an entire team is going to be doing on his own. Uh, moving forward, one more thing that you can use with El Haytham is you can utilize El Haytham's insanely high uh, dendro application and run him with a Nilo Bloom team. Now, you can run him either as a solo Dendro in a Nilo Bloom team, or you can run him in a Nilo Bloom team where you run him with another Dendro and then you'd have Nilo 
plus one additional hydro, something like Yela or Tincho. And these are essentially all the team comp variations for El Hatem. However, you can also run El Hatem in AoE with Dory, Kazuha, and uh, Nahida. And finally, I just want to mention the following. Zhongli can be a good general support for El Hatem because Zhongli uh, provides a good shield which removes the uh, healer spot. Plus, Zhongli can also give you, uh, well, Dendro and Electro uh, Shrek from his shield. Last but not least, when it comes to Alhatham's uh, energy recharge requirements, here's what you should take into consideration. If you are running Alhatham on a weapon that is ER based, something like, let's say, Favonius Sword or Zippo's Moonlight, then in that case, your ER, obviously, your ER requirements are gonna go down according to the weapon. That being said, as a general rule of uh, thumb, Alhatham's energy recharge requirements are going to be somewhere between 100 to 130 if he's being played in triple dendro team with one electro. If he's being played with two electro and two dendro, his energy recharge requirements are going to be between 130 and 140. If he's being played uh, in double dendro without uh, electro resonance, it's going to be between 140 to 150, 145, somewhere around that range. And if he is solo dendro, then it can be anywhere between 150 to 200, depending on the team composition and depending on the weapons and, uh, well, even the enemies that you are fighting. One final thing that I forgot to mention uh, throughout the video is that I'll hate MC, it can be used as a means to break enemy weakness points if they do have any weakness points. But uh, how useful is that? I'll leave it up to you to decide. It is a feature that exists. Uh, not sure if it's too useful, though. And yeah, this is the guide. I'll hate them overall. He's an extremely, extremely powerful unit. He is uh, free-to-play friendly. He scales extremely well with investment. And he is very, very good for uh, people who want to whale for him. Um, if I forgot anything, I'll leave it down in the comments, in a pinned comment, any corrections or notes. But... For now, thank you all for the huge support with the channel. Again, what we have accomplished within three weeks is extremely enormous, especially for a new channel. I hope that you guys have found this video useful and or enjoyed it. Take care. I'll see you all in the next time.